All right, guys, we're going to be pouring these concrete steps today along with this concrete patio. So they're both attached, as you can see. I did all the prep work here. I did the foreman. I did the styrofoam. I did the rebar and uh, got it all ready to go. So we're going to be pouring the concrete, and that's what this video is going to be about. Later in the video, I'm going to show you what the finished product is going to look like. It's going to look like that patio and, and concrete stairs up there. So make sure you watch all the video to see what it's going to look like. Now, before we started, this is what it looked like. It was just basically a frost wall with some piers, and uh, that's it, some rebar sticking out. So now, after I got it formed up and ready to go, this is it. So here we are, starting to pour the concrete, and we're pouring these concrete stairs, you know, with a pretty dry mix to start with. We don't want the concrete to really sag too much. We want it to hold its shape as best as it can without pouring it too dry. So I asked the driver for about a three inch slump to start with. So that's, it's right around there. You know, that we don't have a tester here, but if I had to guess, depending on all my experience, I'd say this is about a three inch slump. And we like to, you know, always pour the concrete steps first whenever we're doing a patio or, or a slab along with them or something like that, you know, and get them. That way we can pour the concrete dry. And then when we get to the flat part, the part that's more level we can we can wet up the concrete a little bit more to make it easier to work with that part we're pouring right now is about you know that's about 16 inches thick right there in that section and then it goes to about a foot thick on that second step and then where the very first step is it's about six inches thick so there's quite a bit of concrete going right in that section of concrete stairs there's probably about two yards of concrete. These are about, you know, 15 feet wide. I had a five and a half inch riser on it and about a 12 inch tread. And, you know, that's the way the GC wanted me to form them up because of what's going over the top of these. You know, they, they had a specific design and they had a plan, a blueprint for this. And the, I had to form it right to the blueprint. So that's the way that's why it looks the way it is, you know, and doesn't have a typical, like, 7-inch riser on it. Um, I just formed it to what they, they, the specs that they had and told me to do. Uh, you can see how dry that concrete is. It's pretty dry. I wouldn't want to have to pour the whole top patio like that either. Um, but we're getting the concrete in place. And then we're going to show you here how we're going to level it out and and get it mag floated but the first thing we got to do is just get it in place you know you got to start with a pretty dry slump number one and then you know this is a 4000 psi these are going to be the you know exterior that goes through some freeze and thaw cycles up here in maine so we use a 4000 psi concrete and then uh, it has some air entrainment in it and that helps with freeze and thaw cycles too and it has water reducer in it also. We always use water reducer in our concrete, so we we don't want to have to add any more water than what's needed to uh, to weaken the concrete. You know, we that's why the water reducer is there, so we use it. And I use it in all my pours. I've got a couple other videos on concrete steps too. I'll have them linked at the end of this video if you want to check out some more pours about concrete steps. Also, if you're not a subscriber yet to the channel, you know, please subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week, everything about concrete. And uh, if you like concrete stuff, then go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Hit the like button if you like these kind of videos. Um, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. So after we get most of the concrete in place, you know, then we'll vibrate it. And I like that little DeWalt pencil vibrator. I have a, I'll have a link for that down in the description if you want to check that out. But... That thing's really handy. It's uh, it's lightweight. It's convenient. So that DeWalt pencil vi vibrator is something we use a lot of, especially when we pour concrete steps. So now what we're doing is we're magging. We're just going to rough it in here real quick so because we know we have the patio to pour. So we're just mag floating it. And then we'll come back after we do the patio and just fine tune it a little bit if it needs it. But So right now Luke and I are just getting out any excess concrete mag floating it level with the top of the forms and, and 
just getting it roughed in, like I said. I did all the form in here. It, it wasn't hard forming these concrete steps because I, I had a certain elevation I needed to be at according to the plan. So I, as you can see, I, I just used two by sixes and I started with that bottom one. And the front one, the one that's about 16 feet long there, that's set right on a, a frost wall too. So all I had to do was set that down on that frost wall, make sure it was level by using my laser, and then attach those other two short 2x6s on each side, get them set to grade. And that was really the hardest part. Then I just added on top of each one with another 2x6 at the right length and that was pretty much it for forming the concrete steps and putting those braces on so forming the steps on this project wasn't wasn't really too much of an issue for me so Luke's gonna just finish in rough those stairs and I'm gonna start up on the patio so we gave we gave the concrete a little bit of a drink so now I'm you know we went from about a three inch slump up to maybe a like a five and a half or a six inch slump to make it a little easier to work with this patio and those concrete steps are all going to end up getting covered with something. So, like I said, I'm going to show you at the end of the video what, it's, what they're going to look like. They're going to look really nice. So we're just basically pouring a base pad for the finished product. And we just need to get it poured, magged out, bow floated. And as long as we don't leave any really big bow float lines, then we can just leave it at that. You can see I got a matter rebar. We used we had to use number five rebar on this, about a foot on center. And I got that all installed and tied, you know, the day before. There's actually four inches of styrofoam underneath this thing. And you know, that's whether you think it's necessary or not, that that's really not for me to decide. That it was just on the plan, so you know, I had to do what was on the plan. I and mean, that's what they hired me to do was just get it ready. So I I put in that insulation and then I tied the matter rebar and then I got the forms up around the outside edge and then form the stairs. So right now we're just making this top part level and it was about 40 feet long total and roughly you know 10 feet wide or so. We're also pouring right on the nice right on the ocean. This is uh a really nice lot right on the ocean. We poured the concrete floor here a few days ago. That floor, that basement floor, had 29 lolly columns in it. And I had the video done on that. You know, that's up too if you want to check that out. That was a pretty neat, pretty neat basement. Um, but, you know, when we pour concrete steps like this with a patio included, like I said, we always like to start with the steps first to keep the concrete dry. Then we can wet it up a little bit. This took eight yards total also. So we got eight yards of concrete. I actually had to order it. I ordered it the day before, so I was kind of lucky to get it this very next day. Usually, we got to give the concrete company you know, a minimum of two, three, four, sometimes even five days notice in order to get concrete. They're so busy. What do you guys have to give for notice when you pour concrete? Let me know down in the comments. Is it, can you call and get it the next day, or is it a week in advance? Or what is it for you guys? Let me know. And also, you know, where, like, like what state or what city you're in. That would be pretty interesting to know. We had a really good driver on this truck, too. He made, he made pouring the concrete a little easier. He, uh, you know, he's been doing it for years and years, so he could almost read our minds when we wanted to start and stop and move. That makes a big difference. You can see how we're just getting most of it leveled out before we start screeding or magging the edges. It was really cool down here today. It was probably 45 degrees. And they're not using warm water or hot water, this company that we're using today. So we, we really didn't have to worry about the concrete setting up on us too fast. We could just take our time if we needed to. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move the concrete truck and reset him over a little bit and Luke's gonna stop mag floating those edges. You can see how I mag float that to get the paste up. I have to 
move the concrete back and forth a little bit. Sometimes you kind of tap on it a little bit or jig it a little bit or whatever you, whatever you want to call it to work up some of the paste. And that makes the edge nice and smooth. Push down the rocks, brings up the, the paste of the concrete. All the exterior forms I set to grade too, so it made it real easy to screed from. Do you guys mag float your edges like we do before you screed or do you just screed off the top of the form when it's set to grade like this? We always have mag floated our edges first. It just seems like to us when we come back to finish, whether it's a broom finish or a steel trial finish or a power trial finish, that if you mag float them first, the finishing goes a lot easier. So let me know, you know, what do you guys do? We didn't need a heck of a lot of tools here today either. You can see we got a couple come alongs. We got our mag floats. We're going to have a screed and a bull float, basically. And that's all we needed to pour this stuff. This is actually the second pour today that we're doing. We did, we, we already poured a big concrete floor and we left one guy on that. We left Darren on that. And that was about an hour away from here. And then, you know, Luke and I drove here and the concrete truck showed up shortly thereafter we did. So this is actually the second pour of the day. It's around 10 o'clock in the morning. And then when we get done here today, we'll, we'll go saw, cut some contraction joints in a big floor we did yesterday that didn't really dry all that well. It didn't finish up until about dark and there was no lights in the building. So we just decided we wouldn't saw it in the dark. We'd come back the next day. It's not too far from this job. So that, that worked out for us pretty good. You can see how we screed this thing. We, Luke and I both kick screed together. You know, as long as the concrete is pretty close, we're not too high or too low, kick screeding like this is pretty easy for us anyway. Although it is something we do every day. If you don't kick screed, then you can you can just kind of pull the screed back two, three, or four times, or whatever it takes to get that part level, then step back and then do the same thing over and over again until you work your way down. See if we're higher or we're low, then we gotta stop, rake some in, fill in the low areas, and then we can keep going again. When there's two of you screeding like this, when you're kick screeding like this, there's nothing worse than having to stop. <laughs> That's why it's nice to have somebody behind you raking. But when there's only two of you, then you gotta do what you gotta do. If you, in case you guys don't know if this is your first time watching me or, or, or listening, I have a private training academy called the Concrete Underground. So if you want to learn how to do, you know, stuff like this, how to do forming, pouring, finishing concrete, then, you know, the Concrete Underground, I have all kinds of training videos in there. There's a forum in there with other people, like-minded people that we can talk to each other. We can ask each other questions. You can ask me questions. Um, that's just something I set up for people who want a more advanced type of learning and training and concrete work and that's the place to be the concrete underground if you want more advanced training for this stuff the link is in the description down below the video guys it's in all my new videos that link so you can check them out so we're down we're a little over halfway now pouring this patio and the concrete driver you know, he sat there for a few minutes in the concrete, sitting in the concrete truck, and it didn't really set up at all. And that's pretty normal, I guess, on a cool day like this. If it was a hot summer day, you may have to spin his drum and, you know, give him a couple gallons of water just to make sure it stays kind of loose. 
but when the temperatures get colder that's really not much of an issue Luke's just leveling that out by eye as close as he can. No, he's pretty good at it. He's been he's been doing it for almost 20 years now. He's been working for me, so he's he's what I would call a really advanced concrete finisher. He can do anything when it comes to pouring and finishing concrete. So we'll get about 90. 5% of this last section filled in. We'll leave just a tiny little bit open in case we're high. And then we're going to come back to magging and screeding the patio part to get that finished off. And then we're going to show you, you know, just Luke's going to go back and he's going to fine tune the concrete stairs a little bit better. And I'm going to show you how I bull float this. I've got actually got a new what it's called like a knuckle head on the bull float from Superior, a company called Superior. They sent me this and they wanted me to try it and they wanted me to show you guys to see how it worked. So that'll be coming up too a little bit later in the video when you when you get to watch me bull float this. So you can see the process, you know, pour the concrete out, get it le as level as you can by eye. Get everything mag floated to grade and then get it screeded to level it. I guess the trick is, you know, screeding. If you're not that advanced at it, how long does it take you? How are you going to do it? How are you going to attack that? That's why it's nice to be able to see how we do it. You can run the screed board right on top of the two buys if, if they're all set to grade like this. You can see how I'm moving around that pier right now, and then we move it. I move it back a little bit. We don't even have to stop. We can just keep going. That comes with experience, you know. If you're new to concrete or you don't do it every day, then you, that's something that's a little tricky right there. You can also see how you know, see how we carry our mag floats. We have a a little margin trial in our back pocket. We also have what's called a, a Leatherman that we stick that margin trial in. It's a pocket protector. And then we can just hook our, our mag floats right on our back pockets. That makes it real convenient rather than having to set them down and go pick them up and find out where you set it down last. So if you don't have one of those and you pour concrete a lot, you know, that's real handy to have as one of those pocket protectors with a margin trial you can stick in there and then. You can see how that mag float hooks right on there real easy. We just needed a little bit more concrete to finish this off, so I'm just scraping the chute. Got one of those chute scrapers too. Did you guys check that out? Did you see that? That thing's pretty cool. Yeah, that concrete's pretty workable right now. I, that's, you know, in between a five or a six inch slump. Three quarter inch stone. Like I said, it was a 4,000 PSI concrete, so it has a lot of cement in it. Can be kind of stickier, you know, if, if a 4,000 PSI mix tends to be a little stickier than a 3,000 PSI. Here I am, both floating. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what that's all about here, real quick. All right, so we just got done pouring. You guys washing out. Just got done pouring these concrete stairs with the patio. Just finishing them off now. Getting it both loaded. Getting the stairs magged in a little bit better. This is all getting covered with two-inch bluestone. So we just need to pour a base. So it's basically just both float, mag finish, and that's it. That's all we got to do to finish it. So, just showing you guys right now, we got a new head for the bull float Pro Tilt from Superior. So, we're just trying that little head out right there and show you how it works. Let's check it out.
seems to work really smooth as far as when you turn it back and forth. The other one we were using had a chain on it, and the chain would get hung up sometimes, and it wouldn't it wouldn't tilt the bow float the way you wanted it to. This one here seems like it's really smooth. All I got to do is just slightly twist the handle one way or the other. That's it. There, so if like if you've ever used a bow float, who uses a bow float that has like a tilt head like that? Uh, you know, sometimes they're called a knucklehead. Let me know down in the comments if you use that thing. So what I, like I said, what I found was normally the ones with the chain, they work okay, but there's a little bit more play in them. And sometimes that chain will get hooked up and they don't tilt quite as nice. This one was really smooth. You can tell it's really well built. It's easy to put on the bow float. Um, and... You know, you don't actually have to twist the handles quite as much as the one with the chain because there's no play in it at all. It just, it turns really, really smooth. You can see how that 4000 PSI mix, it, it bow floats really nice. It really, you know, it has some big stone and that three quarter inch stone is kind of big. And it stays right at the surface when you screed, but if you run the bow float over it a couple times, this mix it really brought the paste to the surface and made it nice and smooth. And that's going to end up being, you know, for us, for what we have to do today, that's going to end up being the thinner surface. So there's Luke. Like I said, he's fine-tuning everything, going back and making sure that the grade of the concrete is, is at the top of the form. And then also at the bottom of the form on those each of those risers, so he's not high or low. So he's he's finishing up that, and I'm finishing up the bull floating process. And then I'm going to show you what they're going to do to these this patio, these pillars and the concrete stairs here in a minute. So hang out for just a little bit longer so you can check that out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit of a process, just making sure everything's right. You only get one chance to get it right with concrete, or you're chipping it, or you're grinding it if it's not right, so or you're filling it in, I guess. Like I said, Luke's really good at that, and he's really fussy. He does a really good job. Definitely wants to make sure that when we do something, no matter what it is, that it's done right the first time. No callbacks. We don't want to go back and have to fix anything. So he's he's making sure that is, is done right. That, so that's the finished product as far as what we're concerned. There's the concrete patio yeah. with a, attached concrete steps. And then... This is what it's going to end up looking like right here. T take a look at this. So this is what they're going to be doing down there on that patio and stairs we just poured. They're going to be putting this this two inch blue stone right over the stairs and then up on the patio too. So what we poured today was just a base for something that's going to be look exactly like this. Pillars. They're going to do the rock stone around the pillars. It's all going to look like this.